can't shake off that nightmare. I'm back at school again, 13 years old, in the science laboratory. Exam results. Mr. Castle is standing by the shiny new microscopes, looking like something furry out of Beatrix Potter. He has one of those grandiose voices, you know, like a, an actor from the RSC projecting to the back of the stalls. In fact, everyone within a 10 mile radius can hear what he says. Bottom of the class, with 17%, Duncan Court. Nearly died of embarrassment. I thought I was going to collapse. I mean, I'd come near the bottom before, but never actually last. The shame of it. My face was red as a Chelsea pensioner's. When we received our results, we all found out that Clever Asian girl, Sanjeet, had come top again with 93%. Mr. Castle shuffled over to my desk and whispered in my ear, See me after class, Duncan. He smelt of extra strong mints and that same tangy, spicy aftershave my big brother Matthew used to splash over himself before he went out on the pool. Now I'm shaking as I think of what happened when Mr. Castle and yours truly were left alone in that drafty laboratory. It was the first time I'd seen a half-naked adult up close. It all happened in a flash, if you'll pardon the sick pun. Mr. Ray Castle. One moment, he was reprimanding me for my diabolical exam results, trying desperately to demystify photosynthesis. And then the next, the next. I've tried to, to block that memory out of my mind, but it's there, indelibly branded on my brain only to be deleted if I get dementia or something. Mr. Castle, his belt buckle undone and his faded blue jeans fall to the floor. I remember he had cartoon characters emblazoned on his charcoal grey boxer shorts. Bloody Tom and Jerry. I remember his pale looking legs whiter than Tipex and covered in little ginger hairs. I remember every mole and freckle. I remember he was circumcised, same as me. I remember feeling nauseous after the sexual assault. There'd been other victims of abuse at my school, Alex and Dominic and Xavier. And now a fourth was going to be added to that list. When it was over, I looked at the 20-something teacher before me. He had tears and fear in those green eyes. And I'll always remember the words. Say nothing about this, you little bastard being said over and over again in a kind of frenzy. I'll never... I'll never know if that young teacher, so much smaller and shorter than me, ever forgave me for undressing him, for threatening him with my Swiss army knife, for swearing at him. Maybe he was afraid the authorities would get the wrong end of the stick and think he'd interfered with me. 
it would have been so easy to turn the tables on Mr. Castle. I felt so powerful. Honestly, I, I feel so ashamed of what I did. Frightening the, <laughs> frightening the crap out of Mr. Castle like that. Touching him inappropriately. Same way I touched Alex and Dominic and Xavier. I always picked on the vulnerable. The whippersnappers. A word my nan uses. Mr. Castle was one of those innocent teachers. And what I did to him knocked the stuffing out of him. He was shit scared of me. The warped kid he had for science. Literally. He, um, he made sure that we were never by ourselves again. And he made sure that I never came bottom of science. I teach art now at the same school. And he's still there, Mr. Castle. His coppery hair now silver. We get on famously these days. And I turned over a new leaf. I always treat him with respect. Especially as we're members of the same family now. I married his daughter, Sammy. Of course, he doesn't know me from Adam. Now that I've changed my name, my look. My whole identity. Now that I'm no longer Duncan Court, the morbidly obese school bully. <laughs>